Welcome back to the IBSP. Here's your host, Foxy New. Welcome back, Fight Fans. Welcome back. Let's just get right into it. Three reasons why Terrence Bud Crawford beats Errol Spence Jr. The first reason is boxing ability. Now let's just dig right into it. everyone who knows boxing knows that Terrence Bud Crawford is an elite level boxer. He's a much better boxer than anything Errol Spence can do. Um, most recently, uh, his fight against Jose Benavidez Jr., in which he stopped him in the 12th round and dropped him. Let's just go through that and kind of display some of his boxing ability. His boxing ability was put on full display against Jose Benavidez, basically by coming in, doubling up his jab, working the body consistently, and wearing Jose Benavidez down, tiring him out, and ultimately ending in the stoppage. Basically, it was a methodical, slow approach. It would have been easy for Terrence Crawford to pot shot Benavidez and not look for a knockout. More of a Mayweather style fight where he would come in, pot shot him, and not look to get him out of there. Terrence Crawford wanted to stop Jose Benavidez from the moment he entered the ring. And the only way for him to do that, because he doesn't have elite one punch knockout power, but that's not a detriment because he has great lateral movement. He has great head movement. And yes, he's going to get hit because Jose Benavidez Jr is a very talented fighter. Jose Benavidez Jr. has fought over 400 amateur fights. And there was this thing about Errol Spence Jr. stating that he had um, a sparring tape against Jose Benavidez Jr. in which he he basically destroyed him or beat him up or, or anything like that. Let's just clear that bullshit up. Errol Spence Jr. fought Jose Benavidez sparring back when these guys were in their they're late teens, 17, 18, 19. So let's not get that shit twisted. Basically, he fought Jose Benavidez while he was still an amateur, while these guys weren't basically full-fledged adults. And so you, you also got to look at it in Errol Spence did the same thing with Lamont Peterson, but Lamont Peterson kicked his ass thoroughly. So you, you can't judge a fight from that long ago to now. This shit makes no sense. Errol Spence Jr. is just trying to discredit Terrence Crawford's um, anything that he does on his resume, basically, he's he's openly ducking and basically saying they fight on different sides of the street. He's an A-side when he's never done anything to be an A-side. But I digress from the point. The first reason why Terrence Bud Crawford beats Errol Spence Jr. is his boxing ability, head movement, lateral movement, ability to work from behind the jab, ability to slip punches, and ability to adjust to any fucking style look more at terence crawford's record when he fought a jeff horn a guy who comes rushing in um who basically is an, a bruiser who gave manny pacquiao hell for 12 rounds that shit was not an easy fight for manny pacquiao so even if you had him winning jeff horn gave him hell in that fight he was an undefeated fighter who came into the fight a champion the heavier the bigger man and terence crawford dominated him he did not win a round he just beat another bigger man in a jose benavidez who is known as a a hard body punching and and, and you got to understand that when he fought Jose Benavidez, the guy's height, reach, and body punching alone should have been enough to say, hey, he's going to give him some hard rounds, a hard fight. And most of the fight through the first five rounds were very competitive. I still didn't see enough from Jose Benavidez to give him any more than maybe one round. But every round through the first five rounds was very fucking competitive. Jose Benavidez has plenty of experience and that's what i expected with all those physical advantages it took time for bud crawford to figure him out so i did see jose benavidez winning an early round but keeping it competitive in multiple swing rounds through the first five rounds um, he also adjusted against a felix diaz in which he dominated an olympic gold medalist now you, you got to look at it, something like that dominating a felix diaz victor postal was very highly rated when he fought him one of the best fighters at 140 pounds when he fought him, he was 28 and 0, and people were scared to fucking death of Victor Postal. He was a betting favorite at that time. So let's not discredit Terrence Crawford, who's fought. He's fought very credible guys. He fought Jose Benavidez, Jeff Horn, two undefeated, um, one being a world champion and one being a top prospect. He unified 140 pounds. He's displayed his ability to adjust against multiple opponents he fought a ray beltran who's a pretty damn good fighter he fought a thomas delorme in which we saw that he has good boxing ability and he destroyed both of these guys let's not discredit 
Terrence Crawford's boxing ability or his record because he's fought opponents at the weight classes he was in who were the best in those weight classes at the time he was there. He didn't duck any of those guys and he adjusted and dominated each and every opponent. And so guys say, well, these guys aren't this and that. Just because he dominated and make it look easy doesn't mean it was. Doesn't mean it would be easy for anyone else. Terrence Crawford is a very special fighter and his boxing ability is on an elite level. Let's just jump right into the second reason why Terrence Bud Crawford beats Errol Spence Jr. And that's his corner. Now let's take a look at it like this. Derek James is the corner man for Jamel Charlo as well as Errol Spence Jr. And during one of Jamel Charlo's fights against an Austin Trout, in which he was having extreme difficulty hitting him cleanly and stopping him, Jamel Charlo came to the corner, visibly upset, basically saying he's making me look bad. I'm not able to get him clean. And Derek James basically gave him no actual technical advice. On the flip side, Bo Mack, Brian McIntyre, Terrence Crawford's trainer, his fight most recently, against Jose Benavidez Jr. Basically, he said, you need to double up your jab. After the, And when he sees you throw the first jab, he kind of, you know, can try to get behind it, can try to figure you out. He said, double up the jab, and then you can throw whatever you want. He won't see it coming. He gives precise technical advice that Terrence Crawford uses, makes in-fight adjustments, and helps him progress towards winning and stopping and beating his opponents. That's not something you see from Derrick James. Derrick James is not a garbage corner man or anything like that, but he's not an elite level guy. He's not offering superb technical advice. Ever since you've seen her, Jamel Charlo, you haven't seen vast improvements. With Errol Spence, you haven't seen vast improvements. The only thing that you've seen um, in, in adjustments in fights, you haven't seen Errol Spence adjust in any of his fights, not even of his best fights. Some of them he didn't need to adjust because he was just stronger and bigger than the other guys. But other ones like the Kell Brook, had Kell Brook not been a fighter coming off a knockout loss, had he not been a fighter coming off an injury as well as a knockout loss with no fucking tune up, come on. And he still pretty much won the first six rounds. If you look at it like this, Errol Spence Jr. fought that Kell Brook fight, got hurt and wobbled a few times in that fight. If you rewatch the fight, you'll see Kell Brook was giving Errol Spence everything he wanted and more for the first six rounds until he got a fucking eye injury. That's a great fight. And you also have to look at it like this. Styles make fights. So Kell Brook is more of an Errol Spence type of fighter, a big welterweight, a guy that's going to come right at you with power punches. That's the type of fight that is. Kell Brook is no, no fucking Bud Crawford. He can't do half the shit that Bud Crawford does. So let's keep that in mind. But as far as their corner goes, Errol Spence made no adjustments in the Kelbrook fight. He pretty much, you know, brawled with him the entire fight from the first round to the last round. And that's all it was. His his head movement didn't change. His jab placement didn't change. There was nothing that Errol Spence did in that fight that he wasn't already doing from the first round. And he was losing many of the early rounds and he never made one adjustment. And that's what would bother me because against a Terrence Crawford, against a fighter at this level, a fighter in which Errol Spence Jr. has never faced, he is going to need to make an adjustment or two in his cornerman. Unfortunately, Derrick James doesn't seem like he's the guy to give him advice on what adjustments to make because he has not done it yet. That is the second reason. The third and final reasons why Terrence Bud Crawford beats Errol Spence Jr., is the resume and experience. Now, I think we've already kind of touched on this with Terrence Crawford's resume, but let's touch on it with Errol Spence Jr.'s resume. And so I'm going to say this the most respectful way I can. Who the fuck has Errol Spence Jr. fought? Now, if you look at Errol Spence Jr.'s resume, Errol Spence Jr. said Chris Algieri can beat everybody on Terrence Crawford's resume. Chris Algieri, a guy who's a naturally 140-pound guy. Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri. So let's let's just dig into it. Jose Benavidez stops Chris Algieri. Jeff Horn stops Chris Algieri. Um, Felix Diaz, John Molina, and Victor Postal all stop John, uh, Chris Algieri. So let's let's not bullshit and play that game because we know that Chris Algieri is not an elite fighter. He's not even a B level fighter. He's basically a C level fighter. And Errol Smith Jr. beat Chris Algieri, stopped him in the fifth round, 
after Chris Algieri had already been dropped, I believe it was seven times in a fight against Manny Pacquiao. So you took a guy who's already been dropped seven times in a fight against Manny Pacquiao, and then you brag on him and say, hey, he's the best name on my resume. He can beat anybody on Crawford's resume. Jose Benavidez easily stops him. Jeff Horn easily stops him. He has no place at welterweight. He's a 140-pound fighter, period. Um, if you look at Lamont Peterson, he's a washed fighter. That There was no, no excuse to fight a guy on that low on the totem pole at this point in your career. Unless it was just a, a plain tune-up. But a tune-up to what? You had two tune-ups in a row, Lamont Peterson, then you had a Carlos Ocampo, who's a domestic-level Mexican fighter who's never fought outside of Mexico on a big stage against an elite opponent. And that clearly showed when he fought Errol Spence Jr. because he came in trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe instead of using common-sense strategy, using distance, reach, and making sure you, you, you use lateral movement to get in and out of the pocket as quick as possible. He didn't do any of those things. He thought he could bang with Errol Spence Jr., and he got stopped in the first round terrible opponent so you, you have to be honest with ourselves Errol Spence Jr. has not fought an elite level opponent a top level opponent or a B level opponent the best guy on his fucking record is Kell Brook and you fought a Kell Brook not even at his best you fought a Kell Brook coming off of an eye fucking surgery and a knockout loss with no tune up get the fuck out out of here you fought a damaged Kell Brook and you want elite level credit for it and you know that's bullshit you want to fight a guy coming off of an injury and a knockout loss so you can win your first world title and he gave you the business for six rounds before his other eye went see what a lot of people don't realize is Kell Brook's face was already fractured completely in several different places which led to his other eye socket easily being broke no matter who the opponent would have been. So you have to understand that else Errol Spence Jr. is not this big eye socket breaker. Who else eye socket did he break? Name another fucking fighter. Exactly, you can't because he doesn't do it. Let's, let's just be honest with ourselves. Errol Spence Jr. is a bit of a hype job. I like Errol Spence. I think he's a good fighter, but he's vastly overhyped. People are putting him at the top of the game already past Sean Porter. And my thing is, Sean Porter has done more in his career than Errol Spence Jr. Just because these guys are fanboys for Errol Spence Jr. does not mean that Errol Spence Jr. is a top-level fighter. The same guys that this guy is fighting, Samuel Vargas, Phil LaGreco, these are guys that Amir Khan just fought, and everybody said, oh, he's fighting nobodies. These are the same fucking guys that Errol Spence Jr. fought. Why is he getting credit for these fights, but Amir Khan isn't? Let's not bullshit ourselves. Let's not. Kell Brook was a damaged fighter, basically fucked up at that point, and he was also drained coming down with no tune-up, no time to adjust, and coming off of a surgery and a knockout loss. Then you fight two scrubs in a row in Lamont Peters and Carlos Ocampo. You are not fucking ready for Terrence Crawford. Those can't be the best names on your resume. Because when you fight these guys, if you look at a Kell Brook, and I'll still go with the damage Kell Brook is saying that was his best fight, you also have to look at it like this. Kell Brook does not have the elite level defense that Terrence Crawford has. He does not. Kell Brook goes toe to toe and eats a shit ton of shots from everybody. If he fights Amir Khan, he's going to eat a lot of fucking shots, but I'm assuming he's going to walk through those bitches because Kell Brook has an iron chin. And you have to look at it like that. A guy with a really good chin who's never pretty much just been dropped straight out. You got to look at it like that and say, hey, what the fuck? Come on, let's, let's not bullshit ourselves about the opponent because you know Terrence Crawford is not going to sit there and eat those shots from Errol Spence Jr. You know he's going to counter him all day and you know he's going to work his body like Spence will try to work his. He will not sit there in the pocket and allow himself to be picked apart body shot wise by Errol Spence Jr. He's going to bring something different to the table that Errol Spence has never seen. He's he he's already proved that he can fight at 147 pounds by since ever since moving up. He stopped two undefeated bigger opponents at 147 pounds so you can get rid of that myth saying that Crawford is too small he's not the right size get that shit out of there and he beat two undefeated fighters two guys who've never been knocked out so no one knows how good of a chin these guys really have because neither one of them had ever been stopped Terrence Crawford is at another level he's at an elite level 
And I believe he's the best fighter at 147 pounds. I believe Errol Spence Jr. has beat nobody. Phil LaGreco, um, Alejandro Barrera, Chris Algieri, Leonard Bundu, Lamont Peterson, Carlos Ocampa. These guys are scrubs. None of these guys show me that this guy's an elite level fighter. Show me that he's the best fighter in the world. He just knocks guys out with body shots. The thing about it like this, he beat a Carlos Ocampo in the first round, and guys are praising him as the next best thing. He beat a Lamont Peterson in seven rounds, stopping him because Le- Lamont Peterson came in with no lateral fucking movement. Watch the Lamont Peterson fight against Errol Spence Jr. and watch the Lamont Peterson fight against Danny Garcia. The exact game plan that he fought when he fought Danny Garcia using lateral movement, getting in and out of the pocket, is the exact same strategy he should have employed against and Errol Spence Jr. He simply lost that fight tragically because he was an idiot and his corner was trying to tell him to box. Barry Hunter was trying to tell him, hey, you got to box this guy. What the fuck are you doing? He was not listening. Errol Spence Jr. has yet to meet a style and that will go against him when he meets an opponent who can switch from orthodox to southpaw and back who can do a lot of shit that he's not used to seeing. He spars with a guy in there, Jamel Charlo, who can't do any of those things. So be prepared to be shocked because Errol Spence Jr. will not beat Terrence Crawford and he might fuck around and get stopped. Once again, it's the IBFP. Please share, like, and you must absolutely subscribe.